Hello everyone, today we're going to take a look at how to set up a virtual machine on your Windows environment. We're going to use Ubuntu on this video, but of course you can use any Linux distribution you would like. The first step is I'm going to pull up my browser and you can go to your favorite search engine and look for VirtualBox space download. Hopefully the first link is the one you're looking for. VirtualBox is a free software that lets us set up virtual machines on our computer. So from here, you can just click Windows Hosts, and then it'll download the Windows installer for VirtualBox. Once the download finishes, you can just click and launch the executable. Now you can just go through the installation process. And we're done. Now I'm going to uncheck the checkbox and click finish. The next step is we're going to download Ubuntu. And again, we're using Ubuntu in this video, but of course you can download any Linux distribution you would like. So I'll just go back to my favorite search engine and look for Ubuntu download. Hopefully the first link is the one you're looking for. I'll accept the cookies and I'll click download Ubuntu desktop. Scroll down a bit, Ubuntu LTS. If you want to stay on the safe side, you probably want to install the LTS version. LTS stands for long term support and this is possibly the most stable version of the operational system. From here, I'll just click the download button. Now here, this is going to take a few minutes. It's a pretty big download. So what I'm going to do is I'll cancel it because I actually already have that image on my machine. So I can just close the browser and launch VirtualBox. Now, when I open VirtualBox for the first time, I have to set up my virtual machine, my VM. So I'll go to machine on the top left menu and say new. The new dialog, I'll just call my new virtual machine Ubuntu, because that's the operational system I'm setting up. Folder, I want to save this. I'll just store it in a memorable location in my hard drive. ISO image, so that's the file we just downloaded. I'll just click other and there it is, and next. Here, what I have to do is I have to set up a username and password for my new environment. And once again, I'll say next. Now I'll need to set up the virtual hardware for this VM. So my recommendation for base memory is something closer to around 8 gigs. And I'm going to say 4 CPUs and say next. It is a virtual machine and as such, it needs a virtual hard drive. 25 gig space is more than enough. Of course, depends on what you want to use this for. For what we're doing today, 25 gigs is enough. And I'll say next. Finally, I'll say finish. And after just a few seconds, VirtualBox will start the machine for me automatically. I don't have to click anything. It'll boot up the machine and we can proceed with the installation process. I'll maximize it. So just select the first option and press enter and the installation process will begin. Now, I'm just going to give you a heads up. This process will take a while. So with the magic of video editing, we'll just fast forward. Okay, so as you can see, the setup is pretty straightforward. If you're running into any issues, however, I'll suggest you take this as an opportunity to do some investigation and troubleshooting as it's a great learning opportunity. As far as finding a resolution goes, there's no one size fits all kind of solution. It really comes down to the type of issue you're facing. In addition, 
A solution may be dependent on the brand and model of your device, as each different brand may approach virtualization differently. So, if you run into any issues, a good place to start is check on your computer's BIOS if virtualization is turned on. It has to be on for all this to work, and then just continue to troubleshoot from there. Now that we're done with the installation process, as you can see, we have a little virtual machine with Ubuntu installed. So from here, I can just click my username, type in the password that I set up in the first stage of the installation process, press enter, and I'm just going to give you a heads up. Since it's the first time we're booting this up, it may take a little longer to get everything up and running. Now, in terms of finishing the setup process, you can really go on and set this up as you would a brand new machine. If you want to set up some accounts, you can do that. I'm just going to skip for now. And we're done. So from here, you can go to the Ubuntu store and download a few apps. You can check the apps that are already installed for you to use, text editors and so on. You can pull out the terminal, which is home for us Linux folks. You can test the environment with a simple ls command, which is a command that lists all the directories in the current folder. And that's it. We're done. Now I'm just going to close this and close the VM. A dialog will pop up asking me what I want to do with the VM now that I'm closing the window. And I'm going to say power off the machine. Remember, this is a virtual computer inside of your computer and it behaves as such. So when you close the application, you have to remember to shut down the virtual computer. That's exactly what I'm doing right now. So from this point forward, next time I open VirtualBox, it'll remember that I have a virtual machine set up. And if I need to use it, I can just double click the Ubuntu VM on the left. The power up process will start. And as you can see, we're good to go. Now, if you want to free up some space, feel free to remove the Ubuntu ISO file we downloaded. You're no longer going to need that. And one last thing I'll say is that a virtual machine like the one we just set up is a nice little thing to have for development purposes as well as learning, but it should not be considered a reliable system. My recommendation is never use it to store important information or files. And if you do, make sure you have a proper backup routine in place. Yes, I know, VMs are used for production work in a lot of businesses and even large corporations, but one, those VMs are not exactly like the one we set up in this video. Those run in dedicated hardware and enterprise level hypervisors. And two, they do have proper automated backup routines in place. So I can't stress this enough. Avoid using it as storage for important information and files. And that's all for this video. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.